Now remember when we were inside the museum, I showed you the models of the uh, cable drilling rigs and I told you outside not only did you have the big cable drilling rig derrick but we had examples of the smaller portable rigs that would have been used to drill wells that are closer to the surface or at least these would take a lot longer to drill and this unit is the framework is, consists mainly of wood and since you didn't have the big derrick of course it is secured by cables attached to the ground so that the unit doesn't topple over while you're working this is a model K star sputter And I don't, this looks older perhaps than the uh, axle that's mounted under it. As you can see, it's designed so you pull the whole thing down and tow it like a trailer. And again, you see here on the working floor, you have another one of those big ratchets that you use to tighten the sections of pipe together. Let's see. Now that doesn't show what kind of years this would have been in operation. Now, of course you have a smaller hand operated hoist to bring your equipment in and out. As an example of perhaps, an, well, I'm certain an older, a little heavier built rig. Same basic operation though. This would be where the derrick, this end where the derrick would be attached. It's laying here, they don't have it assembled. Star drilling machine. Again, uh, it shows, see if the plaque will give us an idea of year. 1920s through the 1950s. Hard to imagine something like this was in use that late. This machine was highly portable when completely assembled and moved easily by horses and a teamster capable of making a hole more than 3,500 feet deep with cable tool rig motion. Another steel wheel Fordson tractor, a lot like the uh, little Ford tractor you still see folks use in large gardens that are quite popular, but you can see you have the winch mounted up front and it also would have had attachment point up here for the oil drilling derrick. Tractor specifically modified for use in the oil field, and like all these old Ford tractors, that's pretty much a four cylinder Model A engine. Here we see another tractor mounted 
cable tool drilling rig. That's what I thought, old Alice Chal Chalmers. Probably like a WC series. Saves a lot of the assembly. Another small rig based on early 40s, I'm sorry, late 40s, early 50s. Ford truck. I think 49. Oh, we don't say. Okay, well, it's a gypsy sputter. What's neat about this is that rather than having a separate engine, it would appear when the rig is in operation, everything is powered by uh, chains attached to the rear hubs. So you, you would park the truck, jack up the rear end. And attach chains to oper operate the drilling rig. Of course, that boom would swing up. You know, I have the walking beam operation on these. It's just more like a regular hoist going up and down constantly. Another mobile rig with an international power plant on the end. Basic wood construction. Another one attached to the side of a Caterpillar tractor. These you might still see around. You make a handy hoist. See here's a much earlier steam engine power plant. Earlier than any of those attached to the exhibits. Obviously one looks a lot like a steam locomotive. Now this is a really neat exhibit. Inside, I saw pictures of a bunch of men, probably back in the 1950s, standing around the cannon, maybe even this one. And uh, I was wondering if Civil War reenactment is uh, some part of the oil drilling business, but one of our ATHS members explained this to me last year. You see how it's sitting there? pointed at the oil capture tanks and when these were out in the field of course just like today they would be surrounded like a uh, with a dirt berm to catch any oil that would spill out in the case of the fire of course, the problem you had is with so many tanks in one of these big oil strikes right next to each other, if you had one tank catch fire in such close proximity, then they all would, unless you could put the fire out. It's not very easy to put out an oil fire. So what they would actually do, or one tank was on fire, they would sacrifice that tank and drain all the oil quickly out into the ground to be caught by the dirt earth and berm and how they actually did that was with an old well I won't say an old a muzzle loading cannon same uh, same design as back in the Civil War I doubt if they were any of them were actually that old they were probably more modern but you would put a cannonball in here you know, fill it with powder put a cannonball in there and fire it in the side of your tank 
so the oil would leak out onto the ground and that it wouldn't be on fire anymore and they probably had ways actually to dig that dirt back up and uh, reclaim at least a portion of the oil I just thought I found that little bit of history fascinating and I thought you might as well well I'm here the Butler County Museum it's a pretty good collection of classic trucks on their own 1926 Ford this is what we used to, they used to call a station hack, the precursor of the station wagon, a Woody, donated by the Stangel family here locally. Nineteen twenty six Ford Model T truck. You can see it has an oil tank on the back. There's another, I believe, 49. Somebody's going to correct me on that, I'm sure. Of course, in the oil field, you also used a lot of high explosives. And so you would have a professional come in. You Usually what you'd use this for is if you you put your casing down in the well that you've drilled and then of course you have to select how deep that you want to recover your oil or gas from so once the casing is in there to, to seal off the sides of the well then you lower shaped explosive to the exact depth that you want to pump oil from and explode that explosive down there and it'd be kind of like shotgun pellets that would punch holes through the sides of the casing to let the oil flow. So you have the specially built trucks to not only to run the winch that lowers the explosive into the hole but also to you can see this how this is reinforced how thick it is to safely store uh, the vials of ni or the cans of nitroglycerin that was used as an explosive. So you don't want to tailgate this guy. Okay, 1914 international truck. Really great shape. So they didn't need much room for an engine back in those days. Probably a two cylinder. See gear drive through the axles, there's a differential. Yeah, there you can see the engine down under the bed, or what you can see of it. Again, your cases of high explosives. And the 1921 Model T truck has been common on farms of this, in this area. You see most of these early vehicles, the cab was added by a third party after manufacturing usually. 